with my eyes I may not see The fire that burns inside of me Stand strong Grab on, don't ever let it go When your back's against the wall, you're not alone Here now I have been set free Fear has got no grip on me Coming back to life What we have here on my left side is a model of a 110 horsepower K. <laughs> and that's the grandson. But it was built in year 2000 by Ansel Waddles in uh, somewhere up around Michigan. And it uh, sold a couple of times and kept coming east till we ended up with it. So it's one of the first. 110 models that were built. It has power steering. It doesn't have a, a steering wheel. And what we have on the front end here, tomorrow we're going to make apple butter. At, uh, we use the steam to boil the apple butter, to boil the cider down, and then add the apple pummies. And then we sweeten and uh, spice the apple butter to taste. Hey, that's the grandson, Kellen Beaner, operating. So, shut her off. Good job. Uh, we cook most every night for the engineers and this is a little fire pit that I built years ago. And the kettle, tonight we're making hobo stew. Just a little bit of everything thrown in the kettle and some roast beef and, and that's it. What we're looking at on my left side is a Chicago pneumatic engine built approximately 1920, 1930. It was originally intended for as a ship engine, for in a, a large ship, and has a generator on the back end to make power. The engine came from Blackstone, Virginia, uh, just west of Richmond. Uh, for many years, I was in the National Guard, and Fort Pickett is right near the engine house. And I got to know the caretaker of the engine house, and I'd go in and see him, we'd talk and talk. And one time I stopped, he said, well, your engine's going for scrap. And I told him, not if I can help it. So I came home and got some friends together and we went down and, and saved it. So it's an 800 horsepower Chicago pneumatic and open valve gear on it. And probably the biggest one that I know of Chicago. There's some smaller ones, but that's probably the biggest one in existence. On my left is a about 1890 Peerless portable steam boiler and engine. Was used for stationary work like a cider mill or like a uh, threshing or anything like that. And it is the first engine that was here at the Jubilee. And after the family passed on, why well, I was able to acquire it and uh, hope to keep it here for many years to come. These are Michelle's pride and joy, these two wagons back here. We have uh, three Conestoga wagons here at the show, and two belong to the Miller family, and one belongs to the fire department. The one behind me belongs to the fire department, and the other two belong to the Miller family, and uh, they are original, and they were road wagons. They don't have a seat on them. 
the Teamster rode the back horse in front of them and they hauled from Philadelphia west. And this one back here was built approximately 1830 and this one was built shortly after. Okay, here we have one of our most important things. These young ladies make ham and bean soup, which is a favorite, sold out every time they make it. So they're some of the valuable help. Okay, this stand is where they sell the finished cider. These people are gracious enough to give their lifetime to uh, handle the booth. And it's another favorite, sold out almost as fast as they make it. So thank you. Thanks, everyone. Cider mill, this is what crushes the apples. This is the, the newer mill that we have. The older mill is behind us. But uh, this mill will make several hundred gallons at a time. It uh, built about 1905. A.B. Farquhar sold them, the company, and they were sold by several different companies, but uh, very nice mill, very nice. This is the old cider mill, was uh, built before 1900, and we've had some problems with it. It's all wood and shakes itself to pieces, so we only use it if we have to, if the newer mill's down. Came from Gortner, Maryland. Uh, can't think of the man's name, but uh, that and the boiler, we'll do the boiler next. This is a Frick boiler. It came with the old cider mill and very good shape. That makes the steam to operate to pasteurize the cider, to crush the apples and do the whole thing. Okay, what we have behind us is a 1913 Gar Scott 2575 horsepower steam tractor. This engine was uh, used originally in Saskatchewan, Canada. And from there, it kept coming east. It was sold to a man in Michigan. And that man sold it to a man in Ohio and sold it to another man in Pennsylvania. And it became in disrepair and I bought it and restored it uh, about five years ago. My daughter's favorite engine. I thought it was my engine, but uh, she says it's hers. Now, the other way now. Out, out with this one and up with the other one. Wait. Now let this one all the way out. Uh, I built this in uh, 2019 for the little guy here to play with. It's all electric, travels on electric, swings on electric, and digs on electric. A uh, model of a uh, Marion. On my left is a 1913 Altman Taylor steam tractor made in Mansfield, Ohio. And it was shipped to Nevada. From there it went to Idaho. And then it was in Spokane, Washington when I got it. It hadn't been restored. The last time it was run was 1961. And about five years ago, I bought it uh, sight on scene. It turned out to be a very good engine, very good boiler, and uh, very good condition. Uh, the engine to my left is a 1912 or 13 Case 40 horsepower. Uh, it was used around Brownsville, Pennsylvania, and then sat in a museum, an outdoor museum over there. Uh, the boiler was completely shot on it, and I acquired a boiler from Spokane, Washington and had it shipped in, and the boiler turned out to be as good as new. So it's a wonderful engine. We don't run it because I have too many to run. You have to clean them up after you're done. So that's all there is.